help you folks? Name's Randolph. I'm the manager. We're looking for Rose. Works as a waitress down at the diner? Rose, sure. Nice girl. Who wants to know? I'm Alan Wake. The writer, huh? I heard on the radio you were visiting. Well, I'll show you her trailer. That Rose, she's a nice girl. Always yeah, pays but... her rent on time. As but I she was is. saying, Al, I found all sorts of weird stuff from the local newspaper's archives. This place is crazy. Disappearances, mysterious deaths, urban legends come true, and get this. Mm -hmm. Most of this stuff takes place around Cauldron Lake. Well, you ain't wrong, mister. The Indians thought the lake was a doorway to the underworld. I'm the God-fearing type myself. I, I don't hold with that sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Anyway, there was an island there owned by a guy called Thomas Zane. Now, some of the articles I found about him make him out to be a famous writer. But I ran a bunch of searches, couldn't find a single thing he wrote. Zane was heavily into diving. This poor so AI. So that the place came to be called Diver's Isle. But the volcano under the lake erupted in 1970, and Zane went down with the island. Puppy? Uppa? Uppers? Yeah, how about that? It was there in the morning, as if it had fallen from the sky. But it would take a tornado to lift something like that. We're damn lucky it didn't crush any of the trailers. It gets better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Sure, Jagger's a local spook story. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. What? Oh, nice. Lady? She can be a little loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, what? she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Oh, God, not that, but where'd they go? Oh, God, okay. They did, where'd Ru Rudolph? Okay. The crows, they, they fucking despawned like monsters. Well, mister, this here's Rose's trailer. All right, thank you. Mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Hello. All right, I'm gonna check out the place first. Come back. There's nothing in the back. Hello. Uh-uh. Welcome to... to... Oh dear, Mr. Wake, I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, how do you, come in. How do you not know that something's wrong? Hey, this is really good! Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, what? for Barry, she doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's? Oh. Barry. What? What? Jesus? My barber's skin. It, what? I wait to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. Bro. I insist. Can we talk about you Barbara's must skin? Turn the Me. Oh God! I felt fuck. nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. Jesus! I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. 
She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do, about the complex incantation I'm attempting, about this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. Oh, shocking. Close. I can feel it. Yeah, close to what, bud? All right, where's the... Rose took a day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, hey, bud. work something out once I got on the road. Doing okay? Yoink! Uh, sh leave the trailer. Barry Am was I out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. Oh, we can't just slap him? You're right. I deserve more what? Money. I'm so handsome. Okay, Welcome I'm leaving. To the oh dear diner. What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. First yeah. Fill is free. Milk okay. and sugar on the counter there. Nope. Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. A nice day. Come back soon. I will probably not come back. Oh. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Whoa. Hey, yeah, let me pick up this piece of paper and read it real quick. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Hey on, y'all. Y'all, nothing scary happened, okay? I need I need you to link this. Thank you. Hey, bud. Please, please, please don't. I'm a good person. Oh, you're gonna get it now. What? I did nothing. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI. Get him up, Hemingway. You're under arrest. You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face. Stay right where you are, Hemingway. Here, you goddamn maniac! I had to leave Barry behind, but there was no way I'd miss my appointment with the kidnapper. Give it up, Mr. Wake! Come on! I assume I just run? Oh god, I thought I saw something in the smoke. Stop running! We have to I... in sight! No, you don't! You don't see shit! You don't see shit. Oh, huh. damn. Bro, what the fuck? Oh, shit, fuck. Uh. Do you see him? No. Oh, hi. Hello, Snip. I know the world may never know. Oh, fuck me. Oh, f gee, fuck. I'm ignoring that. Fuck you. Okay. Never mind. Hi, do you have a pit, though? Do you have a pit? Oh, fuck. Sorry. Wait. Yeah, hang on. I'm just gonna go on this light real quick. It's very unfortunate that that police cruiser did not have a gun.
search the area. Don't search the area. Stay sharp. Oh shit, it's happening. It's happening. This way. Yeah, that way. Over here. No, not. Oh, fuck me. All right, I'll I'll just okay. Don't run out of stamina, my guy. Don't you dare fucking go out. Fuck you, you little bitch. Oh, I think Andy's dead. This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer. Not a monster. Yeah. Uh, also, apparently the FBI, FBI agent mm -hmm. also thinks that I'm in. I'm apparently assassinating everyone. Sweet baby boy. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll just. You on the ground. Hold it right there. What? You There's can't see me. Oh, uh, hey, can you put the lights on? Hey, can you put the lights on me? Hey, can you come back? Okay, nope. I guess that's a no. The crows are killing them. That's nice. Oh. Excuse me? Alright, let's see. How, what's, what's the damage? The fuck is that? Okay. Oh. The fuck is What's happening there? Also, I need that. Hey, do you have a gun in here? Can you pick up pick it up? Thank you. Uh, this is James. Mulligan Thornton, come in. Over. Uh, Thornton here. Uh, James. We got both Wheeler and Rose in custody. They didn't put up a fight or anything. Why they were hey, what, what you come on! Sit down and give me that. Jane, Mulligan here. Over. Uh, go ahead, Mulligan, over. Uh, we got Wheeler and Rose here. Wheeler's drunk or hopped up on something. Speaking of which, that fed had a pretty distinctive whip of load of scotch about him, you know what I mean. Over. Uh I don't have anything on that, Deputy Mulligan. Over. Well, whatever. Anyway, Rose is just being plain weird here. You better get Doc in to take a look at both. Over. Gotcha! You better get them here quickly. The, uh, Fed's gonna want to interview the Wheeler, over. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll bet he does. Looks like they have a lot in common. Mulligan out. The fuck was that? Hello? Satan? No, I need shit to stop making noise. I imagine that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Probably. Unnatural shadows clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without a light. Yeah. Sounds like that's the entire game. All right, looks there like I can... no power to the searchlight. That on. Don't worry. First, I just need to play a game real quick. Hello. Please go through. There we go. Oh, thanks. Hey, can I have a gun? Anyone have a gun? I want a gun real bad. God, this man needs to start doing some cardio, bro. Oh, fuck. Oh, okay. It's just that. Bro, what? What? 
The fuck was that? Can <laughs> can you not do that? Hey. Thanks. Cool. Now oh, can I have gun? feel way safer if I had a gun right now. It took me a moment to recognize the flashback plans. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. Oh, awesome. Just... Uh, press... Okay. No, they're all dead, bud. No, they're all dead, bud. I don't know why I'm trying to like I don't have I don't All right. So I can just use that. I need to get them in a group. Oh, ow, my body. Awesome. More. Thank God. Just they throw flashbangs anywhere they want. Just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door and they're popping off guns there. They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, thanks. Oh. Oh, there's just like a fuck ton. All right. All right, well, that... Is probably the best I'm ever gonna do with that flashbang. And this man, please go more than where? Oh, he's still there. Oh, that's bullshit. The fuck, bro? Come on, man. Oh, please, cruiser. What the hell, gun? Gun? Uh... Sick! Okay, thank you! Gun? God damn it! And listen, can y'all just give me a gun? I'll be... eternally grateful! If you do, it'll be good. Alright, just go towards... Light. The light is good. Uh, the bad boys. Bad boys, bad boys, but you- Oh, fuck me, bro. The fuck? <laughs> Later. Oh, it's a radio station. Oh, nice. Oh, hi. Dip. No. Alright. I hope Maine could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. Oh, yay. Yoink. Thank you. Oh, here's a little surprise. The famous writer Alan Wake just walked in. Folks, I'm going to see if I can talk him into an interview. Yeah, well. Oh, God, please don't say. Oh, God. Mr. Wake. Well, the Popo knows where I am now. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. Oh, shocking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there.
even if it kills me, you hear me? I mean, it seems like you're gonna be okay killing whoever the fuck you want, bro. I've fallen off so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably yeah. good Yoink. I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Awesome, this sounds fantastic. All right, I think that was it. I'm flashing over here. Shotgun ammo? Hell yeah. Go to one right now. Oh my fucking god. Hi. Uh, just fuck that. Fuck, fuck that. Th th throw that. Thank you. One more time. Nice. Yeet. Don't touch me. I'm in the light of the Lord. Ow, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, that was very funny. There's a law. There was no sensible reason for the power company work lights to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Ah! Oh. Uh. Oh. Oh, that's actually a pretty cool view. What the fuck? I don't know what the fuck this shit is. Can you stop? I need to run. Hi. Bye bye. Oh. Nice. Good shit. I only have one bullet left, but it worked. I have one flashbang. Oh, nice. Yoink. Oh, boy. We're almost to the light. We're doing fantastic. Hang on. I know, like, shit's real bad around us, but, like, I gotta get that page. Nice. Let me go to two. That's reloaded. That's reloaded. I have 15 batteries. That's nice. All right, now it's. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the rider on the ferry, it opened its eyes. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. Vera trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong. And it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. By the dark presence, Rose was lost in a dreamland where everything was drawn in black and gray crayons. The old lady had promised her that all her wishes would come true. She would be Alan Wake's muse, 
-hmm. She was smiling so hard it hurt her face. She crushed a bottle full of sleeping pills into the coffee. Deep down inside, she was screaming in terror. Braxan. Hello? Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. It's something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. Like incredibly I monotone. Could see a railway yeah. bridge up ahead and a warehouse of some sort on the opposite shore. I hoped I could find a car from there. Oh, this is going to be go perfectly fine. Hello? Nah, fuck. What the fuck was that? What was that just... <sighs> <clears throat> okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, honk honk. Beep, beep. Oh, fuck me. Okay. Uh, oh, the darkness that was pursuing me was growing stronger, and it was taking over everything in its path. Oh, fuck. Bro, I am terrified. Oh. <laughs> Don't jump in place, you stupid motherfucker. Get me the fuck out of here. Oh! Put, put that fucking thing down. Put, stop. Thank you. No, stop. Put that down. Oh, fuck me! Stop. Thank you! Alright, how... 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 Okay. <laughs> fuck, bro. I was expecting like enemies to actually be on there, not bins. As a teenager, just starting to get interested in writing, Stephen King had been a source of inspiration to me. I thought about all the inanimate objects that had come to life in his books. No one is safe in a good horror story, certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. The darkness could possess anything, and it was getting closer. Hello? Can y'all, like, call me a tits? That would be fantastic. This definitely doesn't look like a boss fight at all. Ooh. Wee. Oui. Thanks. Just don't you fucking come alive. I was gonna make a joke, but then... I saw, <laughs> I saw that. Okay. Everything is fine. Right there. All right, I have max revolver ammo, so that's good. Oh, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it, bro. Why do I need to? You know what? I'll just. Oh god. Bro, run, you idiot. No! 
nice. Oh god. Hello. Got one more. Alright, that was very easy. Alright. Now I can go pick this up. Nice. Oh, wow. Uh, no. No, no, say no to the crows. Hi. Oh, of course there's a tiny boy. Alright, nice. Alright, in the light you can hurt them. Yes, I know, thank you. I don't know, Jesus, I guess? Oh. Oof. Aw, uh, this definitely feels good. Alright, let's get we take the facts of our existence my program on. Get out of the way. They are merely a thin veneer of desperate self-delusion, covering a vast cosmos of madness and horror. All too often, the stars are right. In Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Family Occasion. Journalist Alvin Durless trip to study the local customs of an insular community in Night Springs has been less than successful. Until tonight. Well, I'm glad you changed your minds about this. Ancient customs, local mythology. My editor loves this kind of stuff. Well, Mr. Durless, we don't want to feel like we're on exhibition. But you have demonstrated the seriousness of your intent. Oh, I am serious. Really, just do your thing. I'll stay out of your way and observe. Actually, I thought you could assist us. I'm afraid we are a man short. It would provide you with an intimate perspective. Could I really? Of course, Mr. Durleth. Well, I guess that's the least I... What would I have to do? Oh, here. Let me show you with a kiss. I, um, I... <laughs> Cool. Net. No. Nice. Ah. Fuck. Fuck you. All right. Let's die. Any script. Hello. All right. So if I go down, I'll go down. Let me see. Just like the pathing, so I can go behind that. Probably go over there. Loop them. Hello! Where y'all at? Oh. Oh, I... What? Bro, what? Oh, there's a boy behind me. I hate this guy. Leave me alone.
we good? Can we please never do that again? Can we stop possessing bulldozers? All right, how about we wait and let this idiot get his shit together? Oh, hell yeah. Give me that. You know, one of these times I'm gonna run after one of those and just absolutely get my shit kicked in. Let's get on in. Please don't have me drive. Driving this game is not good. I have never been this glad to see the sunrise. I had a couple of hours to get to the coal mine. wasn't far now. This game is actually very pretty. It's very nice. Today, I would meet the kidnapper, and he would give me Alice. I wouldn't give him any other choice. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. All right, well... Do you still have your gun? No, you just what? Do why did you put the with at? Uh, the pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Slammed the door shut right in his smug face. He pleaded for me to open the door. True to form, the asshole actually thought I would obey. I had no sympathy left. No guilt either. Not for him. I took a moment to savor the scream. I bet I had a smile on my face. It was all that I had time for. The dark presence was inside the lodge with me. Darkness surged towards me, sucking everything loose from the ground into its depths, tugging at my clothes. I saw the flare the kidnapper had dropped and threw myself towards it just as I felt my feet leave the ground. The darkness embraced me with the force of a tornado. Somehow I managed to light the flare. The darkness roared and cast me away. I fell toward the dark waters of the lake far below. Oh well, that's good. Hey yo, just so you know, if we're going in a body of water, the game better take over because fuck that. I, I... Can I drive? Oh, pop. Let's go, dude. Little by little, without uh, realizing it, I'd wait, come to believe there... that the story in the manuscript was coming true. The current of its narrative had taken me deeper and deeper into dark Get waters. Out. Alice had been taken from me. Barry was probably in jail. I was a fugitive from the FBI. The whole world taken over by the dark presence was trying to here? destroy me. It all felt think? real. But it matched a textbook case of insanity. Get on. Get, get in. The driving in this is so... It hurts me. Am I about to steal a car? I'm gonna steal a car. Give me this. I've already stolen a car. Mainly because it has like these floodlights on it? Oh, hell yeah. That, that's ten times better. Please stop. Wait, um... I'm getting a motion sick from this car. All right. What's up? This is Pat Main, and you're listening to KBF FM, folks. I want to apologize for kind of abandoning you to that looping music track last night, but I was detained. You see, I encountered a big shot G-man with an itchy trigger finger who could use a. A lesson in manners and a boot in the ass. Not necessarily in that order, either. Now, folks, I know I'm not being very informative here, and I apologize for that. I really should just keep quiet, but I'm just so peeved right now, because some people just shouldn't be carrying badges. And I'm just glad that our Sheriff Breaker was there to straighten things out. And if someone I met last night is listening, let me just say, I'm sorry if my mouth got you in trouble. 
I'm pretty sure you're not the bad guy here. Godspeed, son. I hope you know what you're doing. Now, on a lighter note, I'll be talking to Dr. Nelson all morning. But first, a little music. I like you a lot, sir. You're a nice man. Oh god, please turn. What the fuck? These cars are ass. Don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Ah. Thank you. Honestly, if I was a fugitive and just randomly I would be getting these cars for free, I would probably be switching cars, but that one has nice floodlights and, you know, floodlight go brr and bad men go huh. Welcome back to KBF FM. Hope you enjoyed that tune. Now, Doc, you were talking about life and finding that special someone, that soulmate. Well, you were talking about that. I was saying I don't buy it. Oh, well, see, to me, that's strange because I always pegged you as a hopeless romantic. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there, Pat. But I think love's where you look for it. And you need to do a lot of looking, sure. But the idea that there's that one special person out there for you, and if you miss that chance, it's gone forever and you're forever incomplete. I mean, isn't that depressing? Or heck, childish even? Hey, there's plenty of fish in the sea. <laughs> and apparently a fisherman has a fishing analogy for everything, but what you're saying, isn't that a little harsh? Well, no. What I am saying is that your potential for finding that connection isn't limited to what's essentially a chance encounter. How is that harsh? Yeah, well, I guess that's a nice thought, but let me say something personal here. Okay. Now, well, I, I don't disagree with you exactly, but I can't really fit that together with what I feel, what I, what I felt for someone, because she was the one. She was. And she... I let her drift away from me. Maybe I didn't put in the work. I don't know, but... Well, since then, and it, it was a long time ago, but, but since then, there hasn't been anyone, not like her. And I'm not saying I dwell on her or haven't moved on. I like my life. I'm not living in the past, but I do miss the way she completed me. You can't argue with the heart, Pat. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I had kind of a scary experience last night, and let's just say it's shaken a few things loose. I love that man. I love him a lot. He deserves the world. Also, is there any collectibles over here? Hmm. 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 No? That better be the creaking of this building, I swear to God. Why does it sound like something is sleeping? Oh. Nice. Give me that. Just jump, idiot. All right. All right. Let's get in the car. And continue to get motion sick. <laughs> I was early. I was supposed to meet the kidnapper at noon in the main building. The coal mine was quiet. It was a museum now. All right. Let's check it out. Hell yeah, fucking gamer sense off the hook. Let's fucking go, boys. Uh, blah 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 blah. Because most of deep mining tunnel to collapse or flood. Thirty-two miners were lost. And the calamity. That's when it stopped. I hear something banging. I pressed the wrong button. All right. Hello. Oh god. Okay. I didn't want to go outside. The cops had to be looking for me. The noon sun turned the place into a sauna. The day dragged on. Different scenarios ran through my mind. Ways of how I'd torture the kidnapper to get Alice back. Or the different horrible things he could have done to her. I imagined her dead. I had no way of knowing she was still alive. It was killing me. 
I was running on blind hope. It was all a waste of time. The bastard never showed up. <laughs>